Welcome to Behind the Membership, episode nine. In this episode, I'm talking with Lisa League from Q Practice. And one of the things I'm talking about with Lisa is how she actually retains members when her membership essentially has a finite finishing point. And Lisa has some great ideas to share with us, as well as providing some really interesting insight into how her memberships evolved over the last few years and how it's evolving still further even today. Without further ado, here's Lisa. Welcome to Behind the Membership with Callie Willows. Real people, real stories, real memberships. Today, I'm joined on the show by Lisa League from Q Practice. Welcome, Lisa, and thanks so much for joining me today. Hi, Callie. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's going to be great to talk to you. You've got a little bit of a different kind of membership site than most people might think about. So I'm really excited to dive in and find a bit more about what you're doing. Um, so that said, um, your membership site's called Q Practice. Can you tell us a little bit more about the membership, who it's for, what it offers? Okay. Um, I help interior designers in the United States and Canada pass a professional exam called the NCIDQ, and that's where the Q and Q practice comes from. And it's used for licensing and registration. So it's something that is an important step in someone's career to go from junior to senior designer or to even be able to work on certain types of projects. So for example, in my state in Florida, you must have a license to do commercial interior interior design. So it's an important step for that, passing that exam as part of those requirements. So it's basically, I offer test prep courses and practice tests and a study group. So it's like a paid community that supports the content and the courses and the practice tests. So do you, you offer the courses as separate courses and then you have the community element as part of them as well as available separately? I offer courses to separate courses and I offer a package with all three courses for all three exams and then depending upon the time of the year so I have for like a month in January and then a month in July I bundle the community with a special package for that um, if there's members that are renewing or I'm keeping them on um, for some reason they have an opportunity to renew their community membership that it's only available for a limited time um, and with a certain tier of course okay great so it you know obviously if it's based around exam prep the the site then you kind of have that finite end to what you're offering yep um, <laughs> do you find that that causes issues with having to constantly kind of almost you've got that community element but you've got that more course feel with constantly getting new people in the door or well I mean out? just just the aspect that you have three courses and three for three exams and if, if you do a good job and somebody else does their part too then and they pass the exams and you just have built-in churn but I, I have people that stick around, like they're still here from the beginning. Some people need more help than others. And then also there's uh, an eligibility aspect to it. Not everyone is eligible to take all three exams at once. So there's one exam that people can take when they're out of school, they meet the educational requirements. And then the others, they have to have a certain amount of work experience. Um, so there's really like a five-year period that they have to take and pass all three or they have to start again. So it just depends on how someone does with it and um, how many exams they're taking at once. But some people stick around longer and some people are in and out in one season. So it's like January through April, they could start in January and pass all three in April. And then by, you know, into June, we find out they're done. And then we start again in July through October. So it just, it really varies depending on the person. Awesome. And so how long's the uh, Q practice been up and running for now? Um, my first paid courses were in the beginning of 2013. I um, put up a blog in 2012, like the, the summer of the exam season in July, and then just ran um, where I had content maybe like one week ahead <laughs> on a study schedule, you know, and just posted that out um, to kind of test and see what type of interest there was in it and then to get people on an email list. And those people are the ones that I reached out to to find out what their problems were around preparing for the exam and 
from that initial feedback is where the course development and everything came from. And then, you know, it has been refined as I've gone along. So it's getting the feedback from those initial people who needed that study plan and like a structured schedule and routine is really a big part of it. Cool. So it's been four years now then essentially uh-huh. the your courses. What actually gave you the idea to create the membership then? Were you an interior decorator yourself initially? It seems like a very specific example. Well, I, I am a licensed interior designer. And so when I took this exam, I just remember the whole process of registering and preparing for it. It was really very uh, stressful. And I got into this somewhat by accident because I had a friend who had gone through the process and it, it, it ultimately took her five times to pass the exams and she had the idea of creating practice problems for people, additional practice problems, and uh, had someone else that she was interested in working on it and came to me to help uh, do the website. And I said, well, you couldn't afford me, <laughs> but I would like to participate. I you know, had been doing things for different people. I had built a membership site for a client, um, and I've been building other people's businesses and I wanted to do something for myself. So long story short is the, the other person dropped out before we ever got started. And then my partner, and I went along and she kind of had this idea that, um, it wouldn't be a whole lot of work. You just put up a site and people buy from you. And that's <laughs> kind of it. <laughs> and it just it grew into what really people wanted. They didn't want like more practice problems, but they wanted the support. They didn't understand um, when the testing organization in CIDQ released like exam books with solutions and stuff. They didn't even understand that. So they really needed somebody to teach them and help them understand. So it developed into something completely different than the original idea. Cool. So when you say it developed into something different from the original idea, was that purely from as you said, feedback as you got up and running and you got those oh, yeah. few people? Yeah, before we even had anything for sale, it was like a lot of conversations with people like this, one-on-one, you know, I get on the phone or on Skype with them and talk to them and kind of like take all the information and notes and look at what the common thread is. And then I put together a sales page for the first version of Q Practice and didn't even have the course built and said, this is what we plan to do. Send out an email to all the people that we had gotten on a list. And if we sold it, I was going to build it. Nobody was interested, then I didn't really spend any time. So really, I, I we did this in December and then started in January. So it was kind of like building it as we go. And a lot of what I've done for the past couple of years has also been member generated content and live content. So we've had homework and specific test problems from past exams that we review each season. And so for one exam, they would have seven different drawings and seven different weeks of homework. And then I would take and select and grade and have my team also grade. And then we'd review that the following week. So there's a lot of, um, content that wasn't like pre-recorded and put together like what you do but more was like live and then the recordings of the live basically were edited and went back into the site so a lot of it was just um, reviewing past exam problems and then uh, the other part of it was creating um, online practice tests for the other two exams and then the um, one the ex- original exam I was just mentioning that had a lot of drawings that has completely moved to the computer so it's been a lot of software development for the past year um, so for the whole new exam content so cool and do you find that you're you're are you still doing that kind of large live component to the site or is it much more kind of evergreen now that you've been up and running for so um it's it's well one course is actually being developed now as I go through it so there will be some live but it's less live and having everything all computerized and being able to put the content for the practice test and have that build it I mean I'm literally building it as we go because we didn't have a lot of time and before when I could see the uh, sample of what it was going to be so I had development and then a content build and that so I didn't want to do too much to where it would be off but there will be less live than it was like every week before. I'm doing four live meetings and then an additional separate workshop this season compared to like maybe 
10 to 12 um, in a previous exam season. So it is less. Uh, and I'm because of the way the exam has changed, there's so much overlap between all three parts that putting everybody together instead of doing the live meeting separately is going to benefit because um, – it will help people understand the content and how it relates to the different parts of the exam by discussing it together. So that's changing as well. So it sounds like the the site itself, as as well as the content, has kind of evolved over the last four years. As yeah, as very ex- yeah, extreme evolution. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, with that being the case over the last four years, uh, what would you say has been the biggest challenge with the membership that you've had? Um. I my first answer when I wrote this down when I was looking at you know the questions and thinking about it was team is like getting the right people to help me but then I have really good uh, team who work in my group that are past members who've gone through it and past the the challenge there is that I get those good people everybody's like a full-time designer so it's like a side thing for them and the people that are really good the thing that makes me want them for team also gets them a promotion in their job so they they either get promoted and move on or they get pregnant and move on um that's hap- that seems to happen a lot <laughs> so other women you know at a certain age because there's a certain point in their career and they get promoted or they get pregnant so That's always a challenge, just getting good people and keeping good people. Um, And then customer support. It's always uh, really important to have somebody that you can depend on. Um, But I've got somebody who's really great now, and she's from outside the industry. So it's super to have somebody who has uh, like a beginner's eye to see and pick up on things. So um, it's just, you know, that's a whole new thing for me. I I mean, I did manage uh, projects, but not manage necessarily so much team in my job when I worked in hotel design. So uh, the whole people aspect, and having like, you know, 11 people and then, you know, customer support and then I have an online business manager and then working with like five or six different developers, um, you know, five on a team and then another person. That's like, it's a lot more people (laughs) than I ever (laughs) planned on getting into. So it's, um, that has been a whole new experience for me. So Interesting. And so what do you have? You mentioned there things like customer service, Uh, your team members also helping with the community and things like that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a lot of questions about exam content. And then there's just a lot of like technical things when we're getting started, like, you know, somebody today, I can't make the videos play or I can't hear anything you know, <laughs> or something like that. Or I can't rotate the images on the practice test. There's all those kinds of things to do. So we're working with really new software and we can't support older, like IE, you know, uh, Internet Explorer 11 or, um, you know, Microsoft Office, so really old, not Office, but, um, it, you know, like Windows 7, stuff like that. We can't really support those older systems and do the new things that we're doing. So that's, you know, that's an ongoing thing. A lot of people do have older systems at work and stuff like that. So um, just all types of, you name it, customer, it's, it's can be pretty heavy on customer support and then it's content support. So we have a daily study group, that's our community. So there's, I, I try to check in, you know, like twice a day, but I often will find myself in there more, just I'll go through all the questions. Um, and it's hard for me to do this. And I know you've mentioned it before, but like not answer and let somebody else answer first. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to do it. You know? It really is. So that's, that is a challenge for me. I have team that can answer. And I sometimes think that if I answer, they won't answer. And I'd rather have, you know, multiple answers on something. Um, so I have to start to force myself to step back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think, as you know, that's kind of been been one of my hardest things as well. And, you know, Mike has to kind of physically hold me back from the keyboard sometimes um, so that I'm not jumping on every post. But yeah, I think it's definitely important sometimes to to let other people have that first chance to answer. Or, you know, as the site owner, if you answer, other people are kind of like, well, that's done. (laughs) Yeah, and then the expectation is that I'm there all the time, and so there's all these questions to address to me, and some of them I'm just not going to answer. <laughs> so, you know, that's the – and then keeping customer support. I don't want customer support in the study group. We have this whole separate place for that, and so if it's only about you, I don't want it for there because I don't want other members to get caught up in that. Um, it's about 
discussing the content and all, all of that. So it's, um, you know, learning how to deal with that. That wasn't something I ever originally planned on getting into is I, I enjoy it. I mean, I'm one of those people that's in a lot of Facebook groups and I like to open that up in the morning and scroll through and look for questions and that I will answer questions. And that's how I've actually learned a lot by um, doing that in different groups. So I enjoy that kind of thing. It's just when it's yours, it's, it's a whole different ball game. So yeah, it can uh, take a lot more time than you expect, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, and I think you're using Mighty Networks for the community now, are you? Yeah, I've been using them since it's like 2014. So when they were Mighty Bell, you know, when we yeah. knew. Um, I took a Skill Crush class, uh, just like a basic, you know, HTML, CSS type of class. And then uh, I liked Mighty Bell. I thought, wow, this is really great. I'm going to use it. Because we had used LinkedIn prior for our group because it's a professional group and so professional environment but I had like a lot of challenges with that because they had changed things with their groups and they had gotten rid of search you know and it eventually came back and just like they really didn't have the ideal setup and I really wasn't a big Facebook user and wanted to stay away from Facebook because of the distraction which this you know I actually tell people to take Facebook off their phone put this on the home screen and this becomes their Facebook for the four months of exam prep because it just takes so much out of somebody so but when I found Mighty Bell I just thought oh my gosh this is awesome I could organize the content the way I wanted I could feature it Um, it wasn't just like a continuous stream they do have a little bit more of the feed than they um, did before but it's very easy to feature um, certain topics for discussion so I have like you know seven and seven and then another four like featured discussions around different topics and I do it on the calendar events and that's why I keep all the discussion around something for a whole season on one topic and then I can pin it up to the top and people can put it all on their calendar ahead of time and um, it just makes it really easy to organize content around you know what we're covering specific lessons and that type of stuff so um, and their chat chat features are great. I mean, I've run webinars in there where um, I just put it like right on the event page, just a video, and then you can open up the live chat. Now, I've actually done that, and then I have a special page design on my site with a chat in the sidebar, kind of similar to what you guys have. Um, and people are like, one or the other is fine for them. So it just it, it it works very well i can't recommend it highly enough so it i really like mighty bell mighty networks now yeah that sounds great because i know a lot of people kind of are moving away from the facebook group approach for paid communities but don't necessarily want to go with a full form approach so i think mighty networks is kind of a really good um i was going to say in between but actually in some ways it's got a lot more features than a forum as well yeah it has a lot more features they're adding more the performance of that if i were to have any of similar on my site i, I would you know, have a lot more hassle and it would be costing me a lot more money. I mean, just that alone, moving that off site. Um, and, and now they have the ability, and I think it's pretty recent just to do the single sign on. So you're connecting with your website. So I'll be probably integrating with that. I've been waiting for certain things to, um, integrate more tightly with them, but, um, you know, I have a lot of moving pieces and parts on my site and I have a lot of custom software. So I just can't put anything and everything on and I have to kind of figure out what's the most important and running my quizzes and the tests and I have uh, new practice tests. They're basically like blueprints and drawings and you have pieces that you drag and drop and put into place or you have hotspots that you click on. Where's this? Where's what shouldn't be here? And so that stuff, you know, can be kind of performance intensive. So moving a forum off of it is like ideal. I don't want to have that on my site when I'm doing the test that's the primary thing so yeah that sounds perfect cool so if that's kind of a bit about the challenges then what's been your favorite part of having the site well i i really have liked how it's just grown and evolved over time so the initial site was again something that i built um, and I started with Paid Memberships Pro and very little, you know, no LMS. And then I added an LMS, and then I actually um, 
partnered with somebody and threw money at an LMS to try to build out some of my features and that didn't work. And then I went along another year and, and hired um, another developer who pulled in someone else to top developers and develop more. And then I have a team of five out of Oregon um, that, or well, they're all international, but based out of Oregon that have taken me like to the next level. So that and being involved with that, like I built my own plugins, a lot of, even the code on, on my site now, but this is the first time I've had a theme that somebody else has done, I've been so much a part of it. So I've really, really enjoyed the under the hood stuff, you know, as well as making the content. Um, and, you know, I'll, that is something, another thing I need to like pull myself away from because I can have people that do that full time, but I think it's fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's like, no, 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 I don't want my theme in the repo because I want it to where if I see something wrong in a button, I just want to like fire up, you know, Coda and edit it myself. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, that's kind of, uh, it's, I, I'm giving more and more of that. <laughs> uh, but um yeah, it's, I, I really enjoy that. And that's something that as I make my site run more on its own with team, I'll just, you know, take more classes and learn and do more things. So that's just something I enjoy. Awesome. I think, yeah, enjoying that side of it is is definitely something that not a lot of, of membership site owners def, um, necessarily enjoy. Um, but I think if it is something you enjoy, it's it makes the process a lot easier. <laughs> If you're yeah. happy playing with the tech. Yeah, I love it. So I want to change focus a little bit now and talk about what you're actually doing to grow the site. So in terms of bringing in new students, what's what works really well for you? Well, I have a lot of content and I've developed a lot over the years and I, I rank extremely well. And so, and I've also been working on going with Team Yoast. They have a um, plan. I had done some site reviews and now they have like an ongoing plan where they review a different aspect of your site every month and advise you or make tweaks and stuff like that. So I've been working with them on that. Um, and so that like, uh, Organic search is really good. I do have somebody that's running some ads for me now, but it's just like brand new this past month, really. That that so we're I haven't gotten my report back where we look at it and see how how well it's done and where we go from here. Um, so organic search, email list, referral um, companies. I'm working with some. Um, I'm built going to be building up more of my corporate plans, but I'm working with some companies that buy for their employees over and over. Um, I have some professional association affiliates. So it's, it's a variety of things. Um, but I think having and developing a really strong content marketing strategy has helped me. So yeah, definitely. I'm a huge fan of, of content marketing as kind of the base of anything else that, that gets done. Um, yeah. It sounds like as well that um, you kind of have quite a, a limited market in terms of it's not an international membership site. It's very much North America. It's it's the U.S. and Canada now. They're opening up testing in the Middle East for the first time this year. The eventual plan is to take the exam worldwide so um, there, there is some potential for that. And I also have quite a number of people that, um, who are in other countries that come into the U.S. to take the exam. And so they're studying because otherwise they wouldn't have access to a study group. So um, one of the very first people I talked to back when I first started was a girl who was over in the United Arab Emirates. And she came into the U.S. to take the exam. And so somebody like her, she wouldn't have you know, access to anything else, as well as, you know, people in the U.S. who are in Alaska or Hawaii or something, you know, just more remote parts where they don't have uh, as many options in the design communities. So it is becoming more international. And we do have a, a, a number of international um, customers. I, I expect it to grow, but the U.S. is the largest market. That's really interesting because I think, yeah, you forget in when you're running an online business that actually some things still are quite um, a lot less applicable worldwide and do have mm -hmm. that more focused market. But it's interesting that you, you've got those kind of international members, despite it being a very much kind of US Canadian qualification at the moment. Mm hmm. Um, and so it sounds like you've also spent quite a bit of time kind of 
getting the site to a place where it really keeps people engaged and actually taking action on the content and, you know, working towards getting a result rather than, you know, with a lot of membership sites, people can pay month after month and and not really use the site. But it sounds like yours is a very kind of active site where, you know, you're you're really encouraging that engagement to actually get that end yeah. result of the exam result. Oh, definitely. The majority of people who do join come in in the first month when I do have my community open. Um, and then one of the things that I have done in the past year is um, have a passing guarantee. And, and the requirements for that include participation. So it's participation in the study group. It's doing homework assignments and, and emailing them in. So like we've had homework in the past for other exams. So we have all the quizzes and stuff like that. So it's actually keeping them moving through the process. So that has kept people pretty active. The problem with that that I'm seeing, I didn't see it earlier this year, but I'm seeing it this season. I'm not quite sure what is different is that people are so focused on the passing guarantee that I feel like some people are just rushing past and only going, what do I do to turn in this week so I meet the guarantee? They're not really, you know, worried about like learning or doing the lessons so it's like how do I handle that yeah <laughs> a balance uh, you know I, I'm looking at changing some things a lot drastically next year so that would be really less of a issue but um yeah I want you know if somebody can't figure out what the homework is it's because they haven't actually gone through the lesson where I talk about it in the video I and mean, they're like short like 10 minutes or less you know and I have the downloads at the bottom so if they haven't gone through the lesson they don't know what the homework is so with the, I see questions from people like that they're just looking for what do I have to do and turn in by the end of the week <laughs> <laughs> so that's not what I want you know so um, at least it, they're somewhat participating. And if they even just do that, it's going to put them farther ahead than they would be otherwise. But um, it's tricky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Difficult to find that balance sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And is that passing guarantee, is that instead of a more traditional money back guarantee or is that as well as? I give people a seven day guarantee. Um, so if they, they join and it just for whatever reason, they feel like it's not for them or it does not work on their computer or we can't help them out and make something, you know, work for them. Then I, I give that. I have very few people on that. Um, so that's just, we give that initial guarantee. If they join during our early registration period, they get into like our first office hour. So it's, it, you know, it's a little bit longer, maybe two to three weeks, but it's, it's generally like seven days. And then the passing guarantee just allows them to retake the course. So depending upon the plan that they purchase, if it's a one season course, then they can take it, the course again for free. Or if it's a, a one-year course, they can take whatever course. They have to turn in their test results. They have to um, do their homework and participate. So the, all of those things that are part of the guarantee, if they actually do those, they won't need the guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> very, very likely that they won't need it. I mean, I want to help everybody pass the exam, um, but I want people to do the work it takes. I can't, you can't pass it by buying a course. It, you have to actually do the work. And it's a point of emphasizing that you have to do the work to get the results. Yeah, I think that's something that a lot of people do forget. <laughs> yeah, and so I have very few people that actually, you know, when I look at the numbers of people I deal with and the number of people that actually need that guarantee, it's very slim. So, I mean, it does help. <laughs> And that, I think that's a great tip for anybody that's kind of working, you know, helping people work towards an end result, that kind of additional kind of guarantee there. I think that's a, a really good idea. Mm hmm. Yeah, I've seen some similar to that in other courses where you have like 30 days, but you have actually have to do the work and you have to turn it in. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So let's talk about life as a membership site owner now. Um, so what does a typical day look like for you with the membership? Is this kind of what you're working on full time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Full time in which I would like to be part time. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I'm usually up early like it might be four it might be five you know and I'm up with the cat and I get her in my lap in the morning with my coffee and you know I'll check the study group or I'll check customer support and I'll check my Facebook and email it's just like my morning routine as I sit there with my iPad and I can basically run and do you know most things from that and then um, you know later on I head to my office where I am now and then I just take breaks throughout the day, just spend time with her and, you know, do what I want when I want. 
So I'm a homebody <laughs> and it fits for me. So yeah, that, that sounds pretty much like uh, my day, to be honest. <laughs> Which generally revolves around the cat. Exactly. <laughs> it, it totally revolves around the cat. It's, it's like we call her the baby. It's all about the baby. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so overall then, what impact would you say having the memberships had on your life, your business so far? Well, I like the whole freedom and flexibility of the schedule. And, you know, for Scout, my cat, because she's she's older and she's had some health problems, it's like I can – be with her and give her the attention and care that she needs. I haven't had to worry about affording to spend money on, you know, a cat scan for a cat or the things that she needs to, you know, get better. So that has been really helpful. Um, so and things like that, I haven't had to worry about certain things because both my husband and I, we don't have traditional jobs. And so we are flexible schedule and, um, you know, we can do what we need to do when we need to do it. And that makes life a lot easier. Yeah, that flexibility and, and that kind of additional freedom. And as you said, not having to worry can can really make a huge yeah. difference to life, I think. Exactly. Yeah, not having to worry. My husband had an accident and somebody, you know, smashed his truck and it was total. And I'm like, just don't worry. We'll just buy another truck, you know. <laughs> and he's he was fine. It's like, that's what you would worry about. But, you know, he's okay. We can get another truck. So those are the kind of things that, you know, having that, income and the freedom, it really makes a big difference. So I don't have that kind of worry like I would have if I had a job with a limited amount of income or, lim- you know, uh, restrictions on my hours to take care of things. It just, it's much, much better the way it, this is. I am totally unemployable now, so <laughs> <laughs> I would never work for someone else. Yeah, I always say that as well. I'm just, yeah, n- nine to five would never, never agree with me. Yeah. Um, uh, so, Going back to the beginning of Q practice then, if you could reset and start again, what's the one thing, if anything, that you would do differently, do you think? Um, The one thing I would never do, and I would strongly recommend it, and I've heard you say the same, is don't offer memberships beyond one year. So I have people that are kicking around (laughs) because, you know, they're taking their time uh, to pass the exam. Um, And then I have like one course is completely brand new. It's a completely new course for a new exam, for new software. And I'm not giving that to everybody. So, um, you know, it it makes a difficult discussion sometimes with somebody that's like, no, they need to purchase that. Maybe I'll give somebody a discount, but that they would need to purchase it because it's a completely new program. So I would just uh, strongly recommend never have a membership beyond one year. So that's, that is the big one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's a, a great tip, especially in those early days where you have no idea what the future of your membership will be, essentially, or right. what it will evolve into. All right. Yeah. And so what's next for you and the membership then? What does the future have in store for Q Practice? Um, I'm looking at moving everything to subscription. Um, so it will be beneficial to the people who get in and get out. Um, but it'll also be, I think, very beneficial to me to have the ongoing recurring situation rather than like a flat price for course for a specific period of time. It'll actually be very similar. So the pricing for a one year course and the pricing for one year's worth of subscriptions will be the same, but having it in a way that I'm looking at things as a recurring ongoing um, and then covering, you know, recurring expenses for team or recurring expenses for everything else. I think it just will, you know, be a better business for me in the long haul. It'll also make it more affordable to people to come in for one month. You know, um, they, not everybody can afford what the equivalent to the one year or the even the six months. So it'll allow more people in um, to get started. So offer them that type of scenario. Uh, that's what I'm looking at. I'm not 100% certain. Um, and then the other thing is that I have the three courses for three exams. And the way the exam has evolved since I started the program is that there's more and more overlap. And so right now, like I'm maintaining content for 
like three courses and four different places and different tests and stuff. It's a lot of, you know, if I have to change something once, I might have to change it in four places. So I'm looking at combining it all into one and looking at, um, you know, how I would tag those or something and make it filterable for somebody to like create a track for just one exam or a track for another. But there's so much overlap um, that it's really to their advantage to take, you know, uh, multiple exams at once or to study for multiple at once or see the content that is on another exam because it helps develop their knowledge in a particular area that they'll be tested on. So it's, there's a big content change, I think, coming and then um, a business model change that I, I, I think will be coming. And it sounds like maybe that content change would work better with the business model change as well. So if, if from what it sounds like, that content change would be giving people access to uh, everything essentially, yeah. then yeah. that works well with that more recurring memory yeah. model as well. I yeah. think. And, and the other thing is, is making like, I have all these different courses and packaging programs now, and, you know, and it depends on when they buy is what they get. So they get confused. It makes it more confusing for customer support. It makes really more work for me. Um, and then, you know, giving everybody the VIP experience because I have my VIP courses that I just closed this past weekend. Um, so I think that really, you know, having access to all of the resources in that program it can make a huge difference for people. So in order to get the benefit and to pass, you know, it's really better to give them access to that. They'll be able to do better if they take advantage of those resources. So giving everybody the VIP experience, I think, will make a difference in their success. Yeah, it sounds like it could be a really interesting move. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing how that, that kind of evolves for you and how you you kind of roll that out. I think it'll be yeah. uh, quite interesting to see. And then as I've grown and I've, you know, evolved and changed and things have become more complex, I'm actually really looking forward to simplifying, you know, reducing the complexity in, in, in whatever way that I can um, for, for me and for my customers. So I think it fits mostly with that. Yeah, that's just making things as easy and, and simple as possible for everyone involved. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That sounds great. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining me today, Lisa. It's been great talking with you. And I, I really like that you've kind of got this different different model, but you're still looking at kind of stripping that back to a more traditional membership model as well. Um, before we go, if anyone wants to find out more about you or Q Practice, where can they connect with you? Uh, qpractice.com is my website. If they want to look me up, that's probably the best place just to, you know, visit my site, see what we're about. You can reach out by email through our customer support if you want to. Um, we have a, a Facebook page, but as I said, we use our community on Mighty Bell. It's closed except for to members. So we don't have like a Facebook group. So um, if anyone is a designer and they're listening, they definitely want to um, visit my site. So... <laughs> Awesome. Uh, well, excellent. Thanks so much for your time. It's been great having you on the show. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how the Q practice uh, evolves and, and watching you implement those changes to uh, bring things more streamlined and simplified. Yes. Thanks Thank so you. Me. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. Thank you, Kelly. It's been great talking with you. Thank you for listening to episode nine of Behind the Membership. And big thank you again to Lisa League for joining me on today's show and telling us all about her membership journey so far. You can connect with Lisa over at qpractice.com and you can also head on over to themembershipguys.com slash btm9 in order to get the show notes for this episode and any links mentioned, including how to get in touch with Lisa. Thank you once again for listening. I'd love to hear your top takeaway from this episode over in our free Facebook group at talkmemberships.com. So do head on over there and let me know your thoughts about this episode. If you've enjoyed today's episode of Behind the Membership, we invite you to check out the membersiteacademy.com. The Membersite Academy is the essential resource 
for anyone at any stage of starting, growing, and running a membership website. So whether you're still figuring out what your idea is going to be, or whether your website is already up and running, and you're just looking for ways to grow it and attract new members, then the Member Site Academy can help you to get to the next level. With our extensive course library, monthly training, exclusive member-only discounts, perks, and tools, and a supportive, active community to help you along the way with feedback, encouragement, and advice, the Member Site Academy is the perfect place to be for anyone looking to start, manage, and grow a successful membership website. So check it out at membersiteacademy.com.